The road trip steams on. We are in Seattle today at the Living Computer Museum, which is right this way. The Living Computers Museum and Labs is in the Sodo district of town, south of the city center, and just south of the stadiums. Starbucks corporate headquarters are only a few doors down. As you might guess from the name, the emphasis here is on running systems. Even before it was a museum, the organization focused on working machines. It started as PDP Planet. Paul Allen, yep, that one of Microsoft fame, set it up so people could get hands-on with vintage deck systems, especially the PDP-10. He was a collector. He decided to share the collection with the public. Then as now, you can connect up locally or remotely to a range of vintage gear. In 2012, it was reincarnated as the Living Computer Museum, offering a much wider selection of vintage systems. In 2016, they added a mission to support current and future computing topics, hands-on of course. So they took the new name, Living Computers Museum and Labs. Of course, we're going to spend most of our time getting good and vintage. Inside the door, we're at ground level. The main ground floor displays cover current tech and hands-on lab space. Of course, first and last stop is the gift shop, naturally. But just beyond to the left is a section showing robotics. The exhibit includes a telepresence system, Kubelet's robotic components, industrial robot called Baxter from Rethink Robotic, and Dashbots from Wonder Workshop. Then there's a virtual and augmented reality display. Here you'll find a Googleplex of goggles. It also touches on the tech of computer vision and the machine learning big data foundation for the way it's commonly used today. But check this out. Tucked away in the back of the main gallery is an 80s computer arcade, and boy did they get this one spot on. Ms. Pac-Man, Joust, Centipede, Donkey Kong, and a few others, all here to prevent any potential human productivity. This room then links directly into a mocked up 80s American living room. Now this is serious deja vu. I had definitely been in this room before. In the corner there's a Coco and sprawled on the floor for Rugrats, an Atari 2600, and a Nintendo. It's the arcade at home. Then on the other side you have adults trying to take all the fun out of electronics with a classroom full of Apple IIs and grade school basic programming lessons piped in over the speakers. I felt like I was emerging from a total recall scenario exiting this little suite. Back on the main floor there's a display of self-driving vehicles. Personally, I'm not sure they will ever become a mature technology until some disembodied voice with a robotic arm starts threatening me and my brother for fighting in the back seat. There's something a bit like regressing to childhood in the experience of being carted around in the back of a car. But perhaps that's just because my life experience is short on cabs and limos. From here, we dipped into another little suite at the back. This one covers computer art. There are vintage paint programs and a digitizer. And then there's a display of interactive conceptual work and this large-scale purely digital piece on the other side. A lot of additional space on the ground floor is dedicated to collaboration spaces for classes and activities. That's the lab's part of the museum's mission. We'll climb up to mezzanine level. Here you have dedicated lab space for groups to explore Internet of Things and games development. Okay, that's the preliminaries over. Time for some proper vintage computing. Up another flight of steps to level two. First, a display on Enigma and Alan Turing. Don't be distracted by the flashing lights ahead. Eyes to the left and follow around the room in a clockwise motion. The exhibit next touches briefly on the first generation of data processing and early software development by highlighting Grace Hopper and Punch Cards. To our right is an elaborate tableau of a PDP-7. This is a lab setup with custom inputs and outputs. It asks how we went down the path of personalized computing. Then it presents an answer. Right beside it is a first generation PDP-8 running a chess program. Footnote for pedants. Yes, the terminals here and elsewhere are sometimes anachronisms, but for museum displays, they're a lot more practical than live teletypes. So, we continue the story of small computers using DEC as a guide. Next in this corner is a much more elaborate PDP-8 setup from about 1970. It's all hands-on and it's running basic at that terminal. Nearby, regular viewers of this channel will recognize the PDP-1170. This one's in the alternative blue data systems livery. You can park yourself here and play around with early Unix. Just around the corner, you had a live DG Nova. Again, this one's running basic. Then a PDP-12 set up running something that looks like the game of life. Across from the 12 is an Interdata 732. Like the PDP-11, it's running Unix, but a 32-bit version rather than 16. By the way, yes, you can actually sit down and compile Hello World or other goodies on these systems. All you have to do is slay the beast that is Ed. No VI for you, dear visitor, and don't make us laugh if you were hoping for Emacs. You must edit your code like it was 1974. Peeking out from his lair is a captive engineer working on a new emulation. That's an engineering panel from an IBM 360. 
On this way, we have a display of memory and storage technology, starting with a big old drum, and then a collection of core and solid state memory technologies. Follow that with a range of mass storage, starting with punch cards and a really big disc, but continuing down to the wee modern stuff. Swing back across to the center of the gallery and we enter Microland. Before us is the Shrine of Altair. From there we go on to some selected micro competitors and kit systems. And of course, there's an obligatory Apple One. Get to grips with the blossoming of the micro revolution. You get an Imsai, a Chromico, and a Sol. And then there's a TRS-80, Pet, and Apple II. Come around the corner, it's the domain of the 8-bit titans. For your delectation, get your mitts on an Atari 400, TI-99, Commodore 64, Osborne 1, and a PC Junior. And then over here we have the Clone Army, a Tandy 1000, compact, luggable, and hometown hero, the Columbia, with a genuine IBM PC completing the picture. From there it's into Apple Land, an Apple III anyone? There's a 2, a Next Station, and a Shrine to Steve Jobs. Sprinkle in a few iMacs for good measure. Finally, in the vintage display, the museum covers the emergence of mobile computing. One more room, folks, and it's the Holy of Holies. It's time for the data center. LCM has its own cathedral of big tin, complete with liquid cooling. Let's work our way around the room, shall we? Over here on the left, we have an emulated PDP-6, and beyond it, we have the Big Vax. That's an 11780. Next round, we have the tail of the PDP-10 mainframe evolution. That's a 2020 next to a toad or 10 on desk. And then in the back, we had this brute of a 10. During our visit, his controlling PDP-11 was pulled out for attention. But yes, that whole corner is a KL-10 Data Systems 20. Footnote, you may have noticed the peripherals are a little thin on the ground. Fact is, there should be dozens of pack drive cabinets with these machines. For practical reasons, the museum uses a lot of drive emulation. Next across the back, you have the Monster CDC 6500 machine, with Snoopy flying across the console screens, of course. And in the back right, you have another Monster PDP-10. This one's a KI-10. Across from it, on the front wall, well, another PDP-10. This time, it's a KA-10. Last, but not least, in the front right corner, you have the Xerox Sigma-9. That's it for the tour, folks. Now, if you give me some space, I've got some serious programming to get on with. Many thanks, of course, to Dorian, Cindy, and Steve for the warm welcome we received at the Living Computers Museum and Labs. If you liked this video, please click the thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos on vintage technology and computing, subscribe to Bejovision. There's plenty more on its way. Thanks for watching.